Hey everybody, it's Ryan from Paddler Co-op. Today we're gonna to be talking about getting ourselves fitted with our gear. So I've got my kayaking kit right here. I've got a PFD, a helmet, a skirt, and my paddle. Now when it comes to fitting gear, we wanna make sure that it firstly, when it comes to our skirt, is gonna fit the appropriate size cockpit for our boat. And the tunnel is gonna be snug, but not too snug around our waist. So when we're putting it on, we wanna make sure one of the most common mistakes people will do is think that it's fashionable to wear your skirt down here. They don't wanna wear their skirts nice and high, but that's not gonna help you out in your boat. You want your skirt nice and high up so that your hip bones are underneath the tunnel of the skirt, and that way it's gonna sit at the right spot for the cockpit of the boat. So once I've got my skirt on, then I'm ready to put my PFD on. Now this is a rescue vest PFD, so it has a strong swimmer's belt on here. If you don't have a strong swimmer's belt on your rescue or on your PFD, if it's not a rescue PFD, that's not a big deal. The important thing is when you put your PFD on, you want to cinch it up to the point where it's snug, not like constricting, but nice and snug in your body so that I can still take a full deep breath. But if I were to try and pull up on my shoulder straps, this PFD isn't going anywhere. It's staying nice and secure. That's great because we want this PFD to float us in the water and if we happen to be swimming or if we happen to be kind of like loose and limp, this thing isn't going to fly off of us. So we've got a nice snug fit PFD on here. Um, some PFDs have zippers with a buckle underneath. We want to make sure that buckle gets done up uh, if that's the case. And then lastly, with our helmet, wanted to make sure that we've got a helmet that fits on even without the chin strap done up. It's not going to wobble on our heads. So I do the rock star test, it works, and then I want to tighten up my chin strap just enough so that it's again not going to constrict my jaw from opening or prevent me from being able to talk. But it's touching the bottom of my jaw. Maybe I can sneak two fingers in there just kind of nice and tightly. But again, if for whatever reason the water wants to take it back, it's not going to fly off of my head. I want to make sure that this helmet is nice and secure. Added bonus, if you can have a little bit of ear protection, um, it's helpful, but it's not necessary. So I've got my skirt well fit, I've got my PFD well fit, I've got my helmet well fit, I've got my paddle here, but the last thing that we need to focus on is our footwear. Probably the most important and underrated things are appropriate river shoes. So these are awesome river shoes. Old running shoes will work for you. They don't need to be a whitewater brand, but they're definitely better if they are because they're meant for that. The important thing about these is that I can tighten them up and tie the laces nice and snug, and they've got some pretty awesome grip on the bottom. So I'm all set to go boating. If you want to learn more or have any more questions about outfitting yourself with gear, you can visit our website, paddlercoop.ca, or call the office to learn more. But better still, registering yourself for an introductory course is the best way to get yourself into whitewater and develop the skills you need to be able to get on the river and have an awesome time. Thanks for watching.